If you've been a long time viewer on the channel, you may know that I've kind of already made this video once. Um, not that you can watch it anymore, but yeah, basically, well, I ran out of ideas. That's a lie. And I wanted to make a video on Orimo that I actually liked, because saying that this anime changed my life would be an understatement, okay? This anime... <laughs> made my life. I should also probably preface this by saying that I'm in no way condoning that you do something that may involve engaging with your real younger sister, as you'll 100% be getting slapped for it, and if it isn't by her, then it's gonna be by me. Or Emo is kind of a mixed bag, you either really like this show or you really hate it, and I think this is pretty unfortunate if you ask me. I mean, in my opinion, I think everyone should universally consider this their favorite anime of all time, and if you say anything less, fuck you. So what is Emo? Well, it was originally a light novel that got later adapted into an anime and helped jumpstart the trend of every anime having most obnoxiously long and painful titles imaginable. However, the difference with Ori Emo's title is that it's actually good because it raises an important question. How can his little sister be this cute? I just don't know. Kiri no Kosaka is the little sister who can't be this cute, which makes this very hard for me right now because one of my other favorite anime girls is Kiri no Chiba, who is, fun fact, also the girl in my profile picture. Okay, please stop asking me now. I don't really think I need to explain what Ori no Emoto ga Kono ni Kawaii Wakiganai actually is, since the title basically tells you everything you need to know already, but we follow the older brother Kiyosuke who accidentally finds out that his sister Kiri no is a total schizo obsessed with little sister Iroge, and we watch Kiyosuke Kyosuke cope with the fact that his little sister really is just that cute. Kirino is kinda cringe though, I mean she represents the ideal form of a model student, I mean she literally is a model, so she hides the fact that she's a total degen and when her brother finds out, this leads to a lot of drama and a lot of sex and oh wait, nope, sorry, that was just the VN. Kirino does start becoming more open about the fact that she is a big stupid idiot though, and you know, while some may still hate her, I think that just means you're as big of a stupid idiot as she is. Thanks for watching, bye bye. <laughs> you know, the thing I find especially funny about Oriimo is that the the romance in it somehow went farther than actual romance anime. Now don't get me wrong, I do consider Orimo a romance, just not really in the traditional sense. I mean, if it was traditional, I don't think he would be trying to fuck his sister. I'll say it now and I'll say it again, okay? In fact, I would pledge my life to the belief that this anime wouldn't get nearly as much hate as it does if it weren't for the fact that they were blood related. Like, I don't know why you guys think this is so controversial, I mean, I always thought that made it better. It's not even like I'm purely attracted to this anime just because it's taboo, I mean, trust me, I've tried watching other stuff like Yosuke no Sora and Kiss Sis, but even these I consider pretty mediocre at best, though I might have to get back to you on Kiss Sis since that was a very long time ago. Even our manga sensei, which was made by the same guy, I ended up dropping because when your main girl not only looks but even acts like a flaccid piece of paper, then I'm sorry, but you know for a fact that I am shredding that shit. Oh, did I mention the only two things this guy's worked on are Oriimo and Aramanga Sensei? Yeah, he's uh done nothing else. His name is Tsukasa Fushimi, and at a delectable 41 years old, he has definitely managed to reach his peak with Oriimo, seeing as how out of the the two stories he's made, he has somehow already managed to plagiarize himself once. You know, with Studio A1, it's kind of a coin flip, like you're either gonna get something really bad or really mediocre, and if you're asking me how Oriimo fits into that, well honestly, I don't know, this shit doesn't make sense to me either. I think what really makes me ink my pants are the characters, like even the main lead Kyosuke is good. I've never really been a big fan of self-insert based anime, I think in most cases you'll be able to predict pretty easily what's coming next if you have the attention span of anything higher than a Umaru chan on crack. It's kind of insulting to me at least that so many protagonists are too much of a scaredy cat to do anything themselves, because if the author is assuming that we're supposed to be self-inserting into these guys, then doesn't that kind of mean he's insinuating that we're a bitch? Like, you can say what you want about the damage control that happened after they got married, but it still doesn't negate the fact that this guy just confessed his unwavering love to a 14-year-old blood-related Umoto-chan like this guy is literally going to prison, are you listening to me? I see a lot of people argue that Kirino is annoying, I'm not gonna deny that this isn't true, I'd much rather just ignore you exist. I feel like the only people who don't understand how annoying it is to have a sibling are the ones who haven't experienced it themselves, and talking about this in the context of wanting to fuck my sister is really starting to creep me out, so I think I'm just gonna move on. I don't know if this says something about me as a person, but girls who want to beat me up are just far more appealing in my eyes. With anime especially, you see this archetype a lot of girls acting overly submissive, which just makes me feel kinda weird, like I still can't wrap my head around the fact that one of the few shows that doesn't do this is the one about a guy coming to terms with the fact that he's an unhinged siscon. Come on guys, Kirino has a lot of good sides too though, like, uh, duh, she likes anime, she likes gaming, 
thing. Um, uh, she's not in need, and I don't need to save her. I need her to save me. Honestly, I'm kind of scared to talk about Kuroneko because it's almost universally agreed that she is better, and to that I say, why did you even watch this show? It's literally about incest. Don't get me wrong, I still think she's a really good character, and while I'll never support her being better, she definitely holds a special place in my heart for at least trying. Kuroneko even had a relationship with Kyosuke for months, and you know, it's really cute and all, but at the end of the day, family always does come first, and that is a hill I am willing to die on. When it comes to Minami though, I don't even know if calling her mid is the right word because she is so painfully boring that I have nothing to say about her. Like she barely gets mad, she barely gets sad, you can't even tell when she's happy or not because she always has a little shit eating grin on her face, did I mention I hate this character? And look, I love short hair as much as the next guy, but I feel like there's a very fine line where it becomes too short and this girl managed to reach just the right spot where I fucking hate it. Thankfully I never had to worry too much about her since she was designated the I really wish I weren't here right now role within her conception itself seeing as she was given the impossible task of being a childhood friend. Yeah, why do they still do this? Aya say is Aya awesome. She is a complete schizo and only gets worse over time, which makes me very happy because this is pretty similar to how my life has come to complete shambles. I mean, look at me, I make YouTube videos. Sayori Makashima is the leader of the otaku club that Kirino joins, and she actually looks really good without these things on, even though she also ends up suffering from same face syndrome. However, I would say that she is pretty- Bananas? I do kind of wish she looked like this more often in the series itself, and I know that saying this goes against her entire character arc, but I don't care, okay? I just want to see cute anime girls. Kanako can kinda kill herself, and art-wise, I actually think it looks really good. I mean, Hirokanzaki's style is instantly recognizable after all, seeing as he did both Orimo and Aramanga. Like, look at this picture of Kirino, it's adorable, and oh wait, nope, that's just Hatsune Miku again. It does make me really sad that people consider the OVAs the worst part of the show, because to me, this is the definition of a perfect conclusion. Almost. You know, while looking this up, I actually found out that the author was literally not allowed by his publisher to go all in with the incest ending, which I still find hilarious, but he has given us some breadcrumbs to follow that some Redditors have gone a little crazy trying to figure out. I'm gonna quote myself from 8 months ago on this one, because if there was anything I said in my old video on this anime that was worth taking away, it's that having Orimo without the specials is like the equivalent of getting a McDonald's Happy Meal but they forgot to give you a toy. And like a happy meal without a toy, that happy meal turns into a sad meal real quick. Look, I may have reached 5,000 subscribers, but I am fully willing to throw it all away for one of the best anime of all time. I mean, considering what my name is on my anime list, um, there is nothing you can do that will fucking save me, so um, please, you just... <laughs> You just you need to hit that like button and subscribe, okay? I'm, I'm just... I'm just so hungry. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Just kidding, I'm back. Um, yeah, this is actually my first time doing this because I opened a Patreon last week, um, and I did not expect anybody to actually join it, but you did- you guys did, so, uh, yeah, special thanks to Red Raccoon and the Epic Droid for, um, upping your tier from $5 to $10, that means a lot. Um, yeah, if you join the $5 tier, you can watch all my unlisted videos, I think I have, like, 11 or something, um, there's a reason they're unlisted, they're not good, uh, but, you know, if you're interested, then have fun with that, I guess. I'm gonna leave now, bye. Oh!